uh, the other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about, Gary, and, and with this I'll bring in another collaborator with us, and it's a collaborator who designed this amulet that I'm wearing that represents the dream machine, and his name is Virgil Ortiz. I'm James Virgil. Virgil, if you would like to, Virgil, I've known for how long? We've known each other now, a few years. Since the Kennedy Center, I think. Yes, the Kennedy first. Center. We were yeah. we were on another uh, uh, project with Carrie Mae Weems. Uh, uh, Carrie Mae did a parade at the Kennedy Center about moving into the future, and she cast me as the future. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and Virgil dressed me as the future, and it was amazing. Uh, but also Virgil uh, is, a, is a sculptor, a, a ceramic sculpture, a uh, native uh, from Kuchiti. Um, and you can tell people more about yourself and how we co we collaborated over time. Okay, great. First of all, thank you, Nona, for gathering all our, all these creatives together to give us a, a soapbox or a, a, a microphone to tell our stories and to share what we do. That's um, I, since the first time I met you, that's what you've done. You treated everybody so nicely, so uh, your energy is like so big, so inspirational. Like when I was doing a workshop at the, the new wing at the Kennedy Center, and you had visited Santa Fe, and you had came, a mutual friend, Joanne, brought you to my show that I was doing in Santa Fe, and you had asked me to create a, an outfit for you. I, basically just about passed out when you said that. <laughs> because knowing of like how iconic you are with uh, uh, being a futurist and all your really cool outfits like way from the start. So um, I said, okay, like when are you gonna do it? She goes, it's in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we jumped on it right away and I said the first thing we to start is um, for picking out some thigh high um, chrome st stiletto boots. And I said, can you wear these or six inches? She was like, of course I can, but you know what I'm doing? <laughs> so we started from there and we built her whole outfit. And uh, next thing you know, we're at the Kennedy Center doing I had that. silver wings mm -hmm. coming off my back, <laughs> a mask. Of a, it was amazing. I wish we had a photo here, but we don't. No, that was one of the most funnest times, but you got what I did as an indigenous Native American artist from Cote de Pueblo. Cote de Pueblo is located between Santa Fe and Albuquerque in New Mexico. But for you to come to Santa Fe and for us to connect over there was just amazing. But we jumped on it and we're at the Kennedy Center. You were on a float and I said, we're going to make you a chrome disco ball. <laughs> so, uh, going on, uh, standing and singing, performing on the float. So there you go. And then a couple months later, you took uh, everybody and your whole uh, musicians, your whole uh, band to the Met. And you said, can you please design my stage and the rest of all the outfits? I said, I'm there. And, <laughs> It's just amazing how you inspire people. Like I had, I brought some uh, some students that I was working with at ASU. So I took them in as interns and I try to um, pass on the blessings that have been given to me by people like you to be able to inspire them and what you did for me. And like that friendship just grew stronger and stronger. Um, I mean, it's just amazing to be able to work with and to be able to educate globally about um, Native American history where I'm from, Coach Eddie Pueblo is like, most people don't know about the 1680 Pueblo revolt, and that is my main uh, reason why I feel I'm on this earth is to educate globally about what happened to the Pueblo people uh, uh, using art. So all my stories is like telling our history about when uh, the invaders first came to New Mexico, uh, tried to take over all the, the Pueblos, and following the teachings of Pope, he was the person out of Oke Winged Pueblo, which is a Pueblo just north of Santa Fe, he devised a plan for the public revolt. It's the first American Revolution, but nobody calls it that because of the bloodshed and the, uh, the murders, everything that happened to our people. But he devised a plan to make this uh, revolution happen. He brought together over 40 tribes, uh, 40 pueblos in New Mexico. He did it by simply uh, giving them knotted ropes. Um, and instructing the runners to run from the northern to the southern pueblos, carrying these knotted ropes, and, and told the runners to go to the leaders of each pueblo and said, uh, every morning untie one of these knots. When the last knot is untied, the whole pueblo rises up and pushes out the invaders. So 
finally this happened and it was America's first revolution and again because it's not taught in our schools it's not in our history books but to be able to collaborate with you uh, giving us this chance to do this is like priceless to me and I really um, thank you for doing that. Thank you Virgil. Yes. And it's very important for me, and it was very important to have uh, the Lenape uh, Center and the Lenape people open this whole installation on uh, the 12th, and to have a, a chief and the people come here and bless this installation, and also uh, not to welcome us to the space, or to this land. And that was really important that we had that opening in that way. And it's very important for me that you are a part of this installation. Your work is a part of the AR experience out on the plaza. And another artist, another Native American or indigenous person, uh, Shanupa, he's also a part of the AR experience. And George Gillette, a uh, indigenous grass dancer, is also a part of uh, the installation is one of the first installation um, AR experiences you see. It's called Native Land, and he is a wonderful young grass dancer, the great grandson, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joanne, or the great great grandson of George Ouellet. And his father uh, uh, gave us the music, or created the music as a record company. So there's a lot of different people. All people are a part of. Afrofuturism. People think that because it's called Afrofuturism that it is a black only experience. It is that we all, as I said earlier, come out of Africa so we can all be a part of Afrofuturism. The other thing I wanted to say about um, Virgil, as I said, Virgil designed, I said, I don't know who said, somebody said, uh, you need a logo. <laughs> and I went, oh, let me call Virgil. <laughs> and I gave Virgil, Virgil said to me, what, what are the, um, what's the inspiration for Dream Machine? And I began to tell him about the many different uh, things that are important to me spiritually, uh, are important to me mentally, and are important to me about the future and about how I relate to earth, nature, and others. And so he began, he said, let me think. And I think it was a, just a few days and we came back with some designs and we went through a couple, we turned it upside down, we did a couple other things. And uh, this is the Dream Machine logo, the Virgil design for me. So thank you very much. And I don't, am I missing anyone here who should be here seated with us? I think Skin? Reza. Reza, where is he? Well, he's always hiding. The light.